Sound Editor is a really unique creative application here that first became available with Melodyne version 4. And it uses something called polyphonic spectral shaping. It's taking the Melodyne engine and allowing you to change the tonality and color of your audio source. And it's really creative and super easy to use. Now in this example, I've got two acoustic guitars here. And again, to bring focus into one, just select it here with your, your editor option into the editing window. And to see them both, hold command and bring them both in and they layer themselves over. Now to begin using sound editor here in the top left, we're going to activate the window. Now I don't need to see my editor window because I'm not doing any editing right now. So we can close that. And whichever one I select here on focus, you can see now the curve for the spectrum conforms to that tonality. It's showing me the overtones, the harmonic series of that particular instrument. Let's take a listen to acoustic guitar right. Now, as you can see, we have our odd and even. Let's see, here's our even, and then you can select your odd. And the overtone series goes quite deep. And let's start here at the top uh, left of our options. We've got the low order, the high order, and a balance between the two. And the energy that you see represented as the balls that come floating above these bandwidths here gives you an idea of how much energy that particular harmonic is getting in this performance. Like this one here, number 22 is going pretty high. <laughs> so we also have some macro sliders to help us, you know, with our creativity. One is called emphasis. As you adjust this, what you're going to do is increase what you're already hearing. You're going to emphasize the, uh, the harmonics. Take a listen as I, I exaggerate a little bit for us right here. And now I'll go the other way. And it turns into a synthesis. So it's using the emphasis ladder to totally give you a whole different gamut of creative you know, applications there. The next one though is dynamics. And as you can see by the little graph here, you can uh, listen to just a transient or increase the sustain. Let's take a listen to this. Now, if I wanted to add some sustain, I go the other way. And in the middle is back to normal. I'll give you a tip. This is a really great feature for when you want to maybe isolate a snare drum hit prior to an audio to MIDI conversion. If you want to trigger, you know, snare drums with that uh, really handy feature. Now the macros uh, continue down here in the bottom left. We have the brilliance sliding it to the right will increase the brilliance of the tonality. Take a listen. And the opposite will do the opposite. Really warm it up somewhat. Okay, and next we have contour. We're inverting and boosting the odd or even order harmonics. Again, that's more of a creative effect. And the next one is the odd even C. These are just the even ones. Here's the odd ones. Kind of a comb filtering effect. Speaking of which, the next one's called comb. <laughs> and that is a lot of fun. Now, I'm exaggerating these parameters, of course, but it's because I really want you to hear the effect. Here we've got a little gear sign under that you can reset the spectrum any changes you make at any time so nothing is permanent here until you render a new wave file representing those edits you can also copy and share the spectrum with other tracks paste it 
clear it. It's all gone. Bring it back. You can even shuffle it. This will randomize the harmonics. Take a listen. Let's do it again. And so on. Now to edit the individual bands here, I want to give you another tip here. And it's, this is what I call bar zero. You see we have one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Bar zero is where the non-musical audio goes. So if there's anything weird or some weird low end, this is where you can take care of that. Let me boost it. I'm going to exaggerate this for the effect. Take a listen. So sometimes when you want to clean up some audio, you can actually take this bar zero and bring it down all the way. Now the first one here usually increases the body of the in instrument. Let me start back here. And now I'm shaping the harmonics. Do you see how it went from a creative corrective to a more of a creative application there? And again, it's all reversible. I should also point out that the top right here, we've got a bypass. So if I do, let's say, make some changes, let's say I'll shuffle the spectrum a little bit, we can AB our work with this bypass button here in the top right of the edit of the sound editor window. Before. And this will be a gain control, so you can adjust for any gain changes that might occur when you're doing some harmonic overtone editing. Okay, and the next would be reset all and copy settings. Now, speaking of copying settings, let's say we really love the tonality of this first acoustic guitar here. Let's take a listen to this one. I could simply choose Copy Spectrum and then select this instrument and choose Pay Spectrum. And you can see the gray bars indicating where the original ones were. And now we've taken the spectrum from this one and copied onto this one. And you don't get an exact sound. What you get is a combination of them both. Before. That's after. Now keep in mind if it's the same instrument that was recorded twice, you know, maybe with two different mics, you might get some more extreme differences there. So sound editor here is a real creative way. And what we're doing is we're doing harmonic overtone editing. A little goes a long way with this. I guess that would be my advice is to understand, hey, what is it we want to do? And then take advantage of these capabilities and have fun trying.